Hello, this is Expressman, and we're going to look at the fastest way to make 200k with a vulture in Star Citizen. So first of all, I am in Orison, and despite the troubles people are having with the Aesop terminal, it's been working pretty well for me. So let's go down here and grab the Drake Vulture. Hopefully get a hangar assignment without much of a delay here. Nice. Hangar 7. Alright, let's do it. Here's my vulture. The game glitched my gray paint scheme away, so I'm rocking the generic yellow. Climb up in here. So the reason I'm in uh, Orison is <clears throat> we're going to go hunting at the Yella uh, asteroid belt. I found it to be very effective and uh, I'm typically an Aaron Halo kind of guy but it's really difficult to find scrap in the air and halo, so we're not going to do that. Let's call ATC, and I'm going to set my navigation to, uh, well, actually, before I do that, let's see if I can grab a contract. So this is completely optional, and will take a little more time to set up, but uh, if you do a delivery... Uh, I'm looking for one that says something about pick up and drop off and this one Ling family Crusader area, okay So I'm gonna do the pick up a package trip trick to uh, mark a spot if I find Something really good now if you're going out to just do sort of one load and be done because you know time Definitely skip the package thing, but if you think there's a chance that you're going to be making multiple trips, then um, picking up a package is definitely a good possibility because it's sort of a hack right now to be able to mark a location in space and return to it. Let's get off the pad and get out of here. So we just have to get, you see our altitude is at 82,000 right now. We need to get it to 90. All right, let me get the quantum drive up. We're passing 90, so as soon as this is spooled, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my auto throttle off. We should be able to jump immediately. All right, fine. We'll do plan B. Going straight to Yella. Hopefully we don't find something too amazing. So what we're trying to get to here is the Yella belt. There's an asteroid belt around Yella. Now it's kind of famous for pirates but I think if you're smart about it, you can mitigate your chances of running into pirates. Um, this is kind of a hot spot right here, so I don't like to hang around. But notice that the belt... Oh, it's running this direction. So the belt is running this direction. Is there an OM I can grab? That's the comma ray. That actually might be fine. Let me see if I can hit this OM. I'm not 100% sure this is a good idea, but we'll try it. Oh, yeah. So that's sort of getting us off the beaten path. Now I'm going to go ahead, um, because there's this sound glitch, I'm going to let my quantum drive go up to 100 before turning it off. Turn that off, and now I'm going to literally go full speed, as fast as this thing will let me go. 
and again kind of just aiming off to the side um, out here the big wrecks like the C2 and the 890 will show as ships uh, of course the scary thing is that it might actually be a live player sitting in ambush or not wanting to be bothered and willing to shoot back so it's a little bit of a game of chance um, with the big wrecks but they're the ships you really want to find because they just give such an incredible amount of uh, composite scrap and you know that would be the time that you'd want one of those boxes to mark the spot I'm just hoping to find a vanilla debris field and that will do what we need to do today for our fast 200,000. Right now that I'm edging into the field, I'm gonna decouple and start scanning. Uh, decoupling is where your ship, if you turn, your ship does not try to steer it just keeps floating in its original direction if you look your indicator here it says coupled if i hit uh, alt c by default it's decoupled so now if i do this the sh you can see the vector indicator right there showing the direction i'm actually moving yes you can just smash into asteroids this way you got to kind of keep an eye, eye on what's ahead but now if i hit tab for a radar scan I get these different signatures. They're often behind you, we think, because the server's rendering them slow. And then I'm going to press Z, or V, Victor. And if you hover over, you'll see in the top corner the RS signature, 1700. 1700 or multiples of 1700 means it's a rock. So that's a rock, and that's a rock. Let's keep looking ahead of us a little bit here. Okay, no imminent asteroid collision. So those three were rocks. We want scrap and that are, you know, salvage or uh, you know, ship fragments. And those will be in multiples of 2000. So we will look for a signature that's like 2000, 4000, 6000, 8000, etc. It doesn't take very long in this in this belts to find them, which is why I keep coming back. Oh, you know what? I'm not finding anything because I'm in V mode. I have to go out of V mode into regular radar, hit tab there. Now you see it picking up signatures now and then go back to V mode. And that's 1700. That's a little spooky. This was one of the things you don't like to see out in the yellow belt. There are a couple player ships out there. I'm just gonna keep right on going and hope they ignore me. It looks like they might be around a wreck ship, which would explain their interest in the spot. So notice that we have an IR, an EM, and a CS signature here. I'm going to go ahead and arrest my flight here. I'm going to hold shift to make it slow down really fast. I don't really want to swing because I don't want to hit something to the side that I don't see. 
All right, let's fly toward that. Uh, really? What is it? Oh, gosh. All right, well, that turned into a big pile of... Nope. I'm actually surprised. I mean, I've, I've done this a bunch of times and seen very little activity out here, so... This is legitimately interesting. Alright, we got a 6,000. That seems to be by its own lonesome. 6,000 means three pieces. That might not be enough to fill us, but I'd like to get started here. We can definitely start there. Bring it down to a reasonable speed. And sometimes there's actually more than you initially scan. Okay, again, I usually kind of find this thing within a couple of minutes of jumping into Yella. So this was a really special case today, in the worst way. So now let's come up on the piece and we'll talk about how we set this up because it's really important to the success of a fast 200K. So M, to turn on your modules and then uh, notice over here the range is pretty good doesn't seem to make a huge difference I might come in a little closer um, notice it already put me in gimbal mode if you press G it can do a thing where the whole ship moves press G again it does a thing where just the mining heads move but you can still you know crab around left right up down in out um, notice it's green. Um, that's because it is a hundred percent. This is it's like how much how done it is. Of course, uh, over here we've got our modules. The cinch is more efficient. You'll get more material out of it. The abrade is faster, but you do lose some material in the process. Now, my strategy is usually that the scrap is dead easy to find out here. So my problem isn't maxing yield, it's actually maxing time. So if you right click, oh come on. Uh, if you right click, we'll change it to the abrade scraper. You can see the stats on here, much bigger diameter, um, but a lower efficiency. <clears throat> That's okay. Um, so the other thing is, if you see down here in the middle, uh, this means that both the left and the right will stack right on each other in terms of aim. So if I clicked to start scraping, um, however, I could choose to hold alt, do the scroll wheel, and part those two lasers. Now for the cinch I wouldn't do that because it kind of needs the power of both lasers on top of each other. However, I'll take the abrade out to two, and the beauty of this then is each one does its own job fairly well right next to each other. And the way how you really want to test this is this extraction rate, SCUs a second. So uh, if I go back to cinch and again hold alt, let's bring my split down to zero. If I start mining, you'll see my SCUs a second is like, I think nine is about the best number I can get. But you can see five, six, three, four, those are typical numbers. And if I part the lasers, it doesn't improve the situation very much. However, I switch to a braid, and uh, without parting the lasers, I'm getting 17, 19, oh, it popped up to 26, that's pretty good. And um, so you can experiment this, but if I part the lasers, I like to bring them out to 2.2 meters. And I can easily hold around 20 with these. Now, because they're parted left and right, it's most efficient for me to scrape up and down. Yep, and I already filled a container. You can see here, cargo is full. That means that the uh, filler station is 
turning it into a cargo container and ejecting it onto the conveyor right now. The conveyor only has space for one container, but you can fill the cargo hold in the filler station one more time. So you essentially do it in sets of two. But say, because like this piece, I want to do my split thing sideways. Let me hold Alt to bring it back to zero. Do the mouse wheel. Now if I Alt right click, it'll switch the axis there. And now if I Alt mouse wheel, it will split them vertically. So I can bring that out to two. Now I can do left, right, maximum efficiency. Now something you want to pay attention to, there's a current bug or two where the abrade scraper keeps being turned into the cinch scraper. Sometimes you'll hear it happen, sometimes you'll see it happen, and sometimes your SCUs a second just drop to cinch levels. And we'll see this happen a few times. So um, those two, oh, so that was our second container. Happens really fast when we're going this efficiently. So we're gonna hold Y, get out of the seat. You know what, I think I forgot my helmet. So that would be a really good thing to put on. And for whatever reason, there's this little glitch where you start to choke as though you were put outside even though you didn't. So that's fun. Grab C for my med pen. C for my med pen. All right, so we're not doing the med pen thing right now. Let's get downstairs, down ladder. All right, so press four for your tool. If you do have a, another tool, you might have to push four two times. Um. And then, of course, just click and hold, move that over, look for the purple snapping ghost, and watch it snap into place. And then it won't automatically eject, even if auto-eject is set because there was something in there. So we'll pop that button. It'll poop it out. It won't let you move it till that little door shuts. And then we'll put that in. Two down. Uh, like 16 to go. <laughs> Hold R to holster. Now, if you find yourself stuck out here without the uh, tractor beam gun, you can go to create, and that's if you have material in the bin. You can actually create the multi-tool and create the tractor beam attachment. Keep in mind, it takes 0.89 SCU to build the multi-tool and 0.2 uh, to build the tractor beam attachment. That's slightly more than one SCU, which means two things. One, you're going to make a couple trips um, to get the thing built. Two, um, one of these, you know, one SCU will get you 7,600 something AUEC. And this takes basically 90% of that. But if you bought it in Orison, you'd be buying it for like 450 AUEC. So basically, it's super convenient to build it out here but you're essentially paying 7,000 for it in lost income versus just paying 450 for it in, in town. All right, let's finish this piece out. Now notice though, um, I do have the right numbers over here for a braid. So let's see if it sounds like it's doing a braid. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, sometimes one of the lasers will stop tracking or won't fire at all. Just simply power cycle the module. Just press M, turn it off, turn it on. Uh, if it's still misbehaving, then just power cycle the whole ship. So you can see the two blue circles. They represent how much material is underneath the laser at any given moment. So you know whether you're hitting pay dirt or not. See, when that zeroes out to red, it's just not touching anything. For peak efficiency, of course, our goal is to try to keep as much blue in both of those circles at the same time. But we're kind of doing cleanup work right now. This feels really slow. Oh, our numbers changed. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. That is cinch statistics, even though it says a braid is selected. That's why it's going slow. So we're going to right click, 
switch to cinch, right click again, switch back to a braid, and you see our three meters. It's working now. And again, just because it says it's doing it doesn't mean it's doing it. Now we're back to fast. And we already got a container. All right, so this piece is done. Click to stop and press G so I have regular steering control of my ship. And then let's look for the scrap icon. There it is. Let's, oh, we got one right below us. Let's just hit that one. back we just kept on going uh, I did exhaust that small field however within scanning reach of that field was another field actually a fair bit bigger so I just kept going uh, and that is more what I expect around here um, so now what I'm showing you is we're filling the aisle way we're gonna get this really really full Getting a little scary at this point, but we need to get it completely full if we're going to hit our 200,000. Alright, so we can get three more in here, I believe, because I don't think you can stack one on top of, of that. Alright, that's truly all we have room for, which is too bad, because I think this is the first piece of debris in this whole field that I've hit. Um, it'd be a great spot to drop a marker box, but that's not what I did. That's okay, I don't actually really have time to come back, so it's not that big of a deal. Typically, I can refind a good debris field quite quickly. It's just not what you saw today. Um, but I really do think it was sort of the server spawn delay issue that we keep talking about because now there seems to be a lot around me. Get to the TDD, you might recognize that's Green Circle, the place that you spawn if you spawn in Orison. And then uh, over there is the hospital. Over there is the Narwhal Monument. Uh, that smaller door over there is the Mini Mall, Stratus. And here is the TDD. See if we can do it. So we're going to switch to the cell tab. Select our vulture as the inventory. Give it a second. Sometimes it 
load slowly. So we got 12 and 11. Uh, the 11 are the what we have on the aisles, and the 12 are what's in thing. We can hit select all, that's 92k. Confirm that. Uh, I've never seen that before. 92k. Okay, that worked that time. Scared the heck out of me. And then, oh, this isn't going to be 200,000. I fell short. Ninety-two plus eighty-four. Ninety-two plus eighty-four is going to be. Uh, let's see, one hundred and sixty-six. So, false advertising. One hundred sixty-six is good, though. That is quite good and it pushes me straight into the millionaire status so i'm happy about that there you go so total time this took me actually it, it, it took me about an hour and a half that's typically what these one-off runs take me um, and it's pretty good. Now, if you really wanted to maximize this, getting someone on a cargo ship, um, getting someone on a cargo ship uh, to run them in so that you don't have to come to the TDD uh, helps a lot. Uh, if you're in a good groove with those abrades, uh, you will be filling up by the time they get back. So, I mean, imagine, you know, a cutty making non-stop runs. Uh, that starts to add up really nicely. Um, you could run two vultures and a cuddy. Uh, you might need even more cargo space then. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of ways to reap the monies pretty good here. So hope you found this video useful. And I'm going to finish it with an absolutely gorgeous shot of Orison.